This brief video is dedicated to installing, configuring and running MQTT on the Raspberry Pi. MQTT used to stand for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport, but this has recently been reduced to just MQ Telemetry Transport, as this shot from the website shows. It also succinctly describes MQTT as a simple lightweight messaging protocol for constrained devices and low bandwidth, high latency or unreliable networks. And there's a reason for its current explosion in popularity. For low bandwidth, high latency or unreliable, substitute IoT, the Internet of Things, a world built on all three. But don't dismiss MQTT as it may be used usefully and easily everywhere. Its basic functions lend themselves to some creative uses. So what is MQTT and why use it? A complete description is provided in an earlier video referenced below, but a brief introduction would describe the situation where a number of devices are connected to a server. This is all well and good, but comes under strain as the number of devices increases or the server is required to carry out more and more processing. The system is not what is known as scalable. Its growth and facility are constrained. And in the world of the internet, constrained means dead end and failure. Enter an MQTT based system. At the center is a broker, a man in the middle, intervening between the devices now called clients and the servers now called subscriber or subscribers. There is now no reason why any number can't log in to receive the details from the clients. You could see the MQTT broker as a giant electronic merry-go-round where clients publish contents onto the merry-go-round and subscribers read or subscribe to the published content. Sharing eases the load and the accessibility, or should we say qualified sharing, as you may need a username and password for access. Consider an example. Let's connect cars and homes to an MQTT broker. Let's also connect utilities and car companies interested in tracking vehicle performance. All could publish and subscribe to all data to and from the broker. We could use the sharp symbol, meaning everything. This is fine, but wasteful, as car companies subscribe to unnecessary homes information and the utilities receive unnecessary car details. To divide the two, we could publish and subscribe to details in the same way as systems we may already be familiar with. If cars publish to slash cars and homes to slash homes, then the utilities could subscribe to slash home and be blind to anything slash cars. And the car companies subscribe to slash cars and be blind to slash homes. Now why stop there? Cars could publish to car and include, say, manufacturer. And homes could publish to homes slash gas, homes slash electricity and homes slash water. Homes don't move, so why not add postcode? And car manufacturers could add models. In this way, the data available from the broker can be supplied and subscribed in what is called a hierarchical structure. This structure is at the heart of MQTT and is referred to as topic. The one word I reacted to earlier in the description of MQTT was unreliable. This could be the most important. MQTT could be used in the internet-enabled home of the future, where communications could be poor, slow or intermittent, or devices powered by failing batteries. If a message from my refrigerator to my milkman reporting gold top reserves low does not get through each hour, then the next message may get through in time for the next delivery round. In contrast, the message from the power station next door demanding remove rods may be more important, but it's a near thing. MQTT therefore divides messages into three levels of priority, referred to as QoS, quality of service. QoS 0, 1 and 2. QoS 0 is careless. If it gets lost, who cares? QoS 1 does not care whether several duplicates get through. At least you know the current status. And finally, QoS 2, where it is important that if an alert comes through, it's happened again. It matters. This is not a repeat of an older alarm. There is another interesting way of describing these as exactly once, at least once, and at most once. This description needs thinking about, but is accurate and beautifully simple. The important points of MQTT have been covered. Let's now install, configure, and test the latest copy of MQTT. As ever, we will work from the most recent download of the Raspbian Jesse, directly from the trusted home of all things Pi, raspberrypi.org. At the time of recording, the current version is dated the 2nd of March 2017. Download the image and transfer it to a good quality 8GB Class 10 microSD card. 
Plenty of other videos cover this process and what you have to do when you plug it in and switch it on for the first time. Click on the black terminal icon here and enter sudo raspberry-config at the prompt. This produces this blue screen and a list of options. Work through the choices to suit your situation, but ensure you change the default password for the user Pi. The only other choice that may be of use later is interface options and enable SSH, as this will allow us to control the Pi remotely across the network from another device. Tab through to exit the blue configuration screen, but before rebooting, enter sudo rpi-update. and enter reboot once the command prompt appears. There are now just three commands that may be entered to bring your card up to the latest software level, and these need to be entered separately. sudo aptget-y update, which updates. The minus y is what is called a flag and avoids you having to keep answering yes to any update question. Update is normally pretty quick, but the next stage typically takes a little longer sudo apt-get minus y upgrade. You will see the system checking the packages installed on your Pi and upgrading accordingly. Once this is finished, tidy everything up by entering sudo apt-get minus y auto remove. This frees up space by deleting unnecessary files, then reboot. It's worth occasionally rerunning these commands to keep your system up to date. It includes security updates and any bug fixes needed for your code. But now, we're ready to begin with MQTT. The MQTT package we're going to use is called Mosquito. It's open source and free. The normal route used to install a package on the Pi would be to issue the command sudo apt-get install Mosquito. But if we do this, it loads a relatively old package and we can do better. We can load Mosquito directly from another trusted source, mosquito.org. It's important whenever you take this option to ensure that the source really is trustworthy. Well, you can take it from me. This site is trust me. Trust, 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 trust me. me. You can always trust me. Open a new terminal window by pressing the terminal icon again. In this process, we're going to copy a key from the trusted site and add it to the list of keys the Pi already holds in the source list. With this qualification in place, we will get a list that describes the package to be installed. So, get the key from the trusted source by entering sudo wget http colon slash slash repo mosquito org debian mosquito repo gpg dot key. That download happens quickly as it's only a short key. So now let's add sudo apt hyphen get add mosquito repo gpg key. Now change the directory where the lists are stored cd slash etc apt sources dot list dot d. Now, get the list and store it in the current directory. wget http repo mosquito.org debian mosquito jesse.list, which now completes the list of all the packages needed for your particular Pi. Now, tell the Pi to check its list. You may recognize that we've been here before. So, apt get update. Now, issue the commands to install the specific packages for MQTT sudo apt-get install mosquito, mosquito clients, and python mosquito. We may as well collect python mosquito package whilst we're here, as we may use it later. The download and installation is very simple, but let's take a quick look behind the scenes at what has happened. Typically for a Linux-based program, it has installed a configuration details in the slash etc directory under its own name here. It contains these directories for certificates and a .conf that is a plain text description. We can use the cat command or the editor nano to inspect the contents. At the base of the configuration file is this indication of where it writes its log details here in var log mosquito, mosquito.log. This will be a first port of call to get an indication of anything unusual happening with the package. At the bottom is an include to yet another configuration directory, again naming the directory conf.d is typical. Exit nano using control x and n to ignore any unintentional changes, and cd change directory down into the conf.dot directory. See what's in there with ls minus la. Note the use of the flag again in this command. It's just a readme file. We can now protect our Mosquito installation with some password access by entering sudo 
mosquito underscore password minus c slash etc mosquito password username dick tony boy Ah, Dictony Boy is not yet registered on this Pi as a user, so let's use the standard Pi account that obviously is. sudo mosquito password minus c slash etc mosquito password username Pi, and enter the password twice. Right, let's now demo mosquito at the very basic level to check that it's working correctly on this Pi. We will subscribe. As this is the first time, there's nothing to subscribe to. So let's enter mosquito underscore sub for subscribe, of course. Minus D, debug mode, just to see what's happening. Flags again, notice, heavily used in Linux command like these. Minus U, we use a Pi. Well, I don't really need to do that as I'm logging into the local machine already as Pi. But now the important bits. Minus T for topic. And we will just enter that hierarchical string of, say, dev slash test. Could be anything we choose at this point. Two things to note here. Don't add the leading slash and everything is case sensitive. That's a subscription sorted out. Now let's publish to a new window. Mosquito underscore pub for publish. Minus D for debug. Again, we don't really need that unless things fail. Minus U pi. Well, it knows that again. So that two is really unnecessary. And now the important bit. Minus T for topic. Now this must be the same as entered for the subscription. And now the new message flag, minus M. And in quotes, the message, anything published by the client. Enter and Shazam. It's seen here by the subscriber. So we can assume that this installation is all working locally on the Pi, a great first step. Now let's tidy up the screen. Place the publish and subscribe in the local machine over here on the left. And now I'm going to open two more terminal screens that are connected to another Pi. This is using the type of SSH link that was enabled earlier on, all the way back in that section on raspy-config. Now, because this is a different remote Pi, we have to use the minus H flag on it to identify that we want to use the MQTT server on this machine, the local machine. All this is done on a single screen just for convenience of this video. So let's subscribe on the local Pi and here on the remote Pi. Double click the client on the local Pi. Hello from local Pi. And finally a click from the remote Pi across to the broker running here. So I have to use the minus H flag. Hello from 156 and Shazam. This proves the two machines can work across the local network. One last item, testing MQTT in node red. This is not a Node-RED tutorial that's covered elsewhere. Just follow this through as a worked example. Just start up the Node-RED on this machine. OK, it confirms here that it's running on colon 1880. Port 1880 notice, a special port for Node-RED. If you've not seen ports before, then they're similar to the address of flats at one address. You may know that a standard web interface works on port 80. The secure web works on port 443. We've seen SSH working here on port 22. And now we see Node-RED on 1880. Now MQTT runs on 1883 in this standard configuration. To save time, we will now open a browser on a third machine. This is the one I'm using on this video editor, which will keep the response rate up a little bit. So, logging into 192.168.08 colon 1880, I can see no dread on the Pi. This screen is a little cramped, I'm sorry. We will drag out the two MQTT blocks, an inject block and a debug block. Fill in the details for the MQTT block. And this one for the debug block, pressing done, and once completed, deploy. Transmit a message from the remote machine, and it appears here. Send from Node-RED, and it appears on the remote machine. Shazam! Mission accomplished! What we have seen is the updating and the upgrading of a standard Pi, the inclusion of a key from the Mosquito site and the inclusion of their list to install the latest version of their software, and how to prove the MQTT server is working on a single Pi, and also how to prove it works from a remote Pi on the local network. And finally, how to show this links into a graphical user face on Node-RED. 
MQTT is a simple, lightweight, reliable and open standard method of passing data that's becoming increasingly popular, not just in the unreliable world of IoT, but everywhere. It's free to use, and now you should feel confident that you can use and develop it in your own projects. In the coming videos, we'll show you how to use it to voice enable a system or track, say, a mobile phone on a map.